guys and welcome to my 1950s glamorous makeup look tutorial for hair and makeup. So I'm doing this look to celebrate the release of the film Brooklyn which is out on Blu-ray and DVD on February the 29th courtesy of Lionsgate Home Entertainment. So the film is about the beautiful Irish girl whose name is Eilish, hard to say without doing it in an Irish accent who is from a small town in Ireland and travels to America to pursue the American dream to basically get a job where she falls in love with a lovely gentleman. I'm not going to give you too much information because you just need to see the film yourself. It's such a lovely film. Um, but basically throughout the film she starts with a beautiful, very natural makeup look and then as the film progresses when she moves to America she gets more and more glamorous with the help of some of her friends along the way. So I had the pleasure of meeting Mona and Lorraine who are the hair and beauty artists behind the film. They worked with the actress Sasha who takes the lead role in the film and they created all of her 1950s makeup looks. So I actually recorded my little chat with them. So throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna be inserting a few little links and clips around here of my chat with them. And they're going to be giving some really interesting snippets of historically accurate information on how the look would have been created in the 1950s when the film is set. So this look is more of a glamorous retro pin-up 1950s look, whereas in the film it's a little bit more stripped back and natural. But I thought that this would be the kind of look that you guys would like to see the most and would probably be more likely to want to recreate yourselves at home. If you do recreate this look at home, then I'm so excited to tell you that I have paired up with Lionsgate to give you a Pashley retro bike to one lucky winner. So if you do decide to recreate this look, then take a photo or a video and tag me on your Instagram with hashtag Brooklyn look or upload it to Lionsgate Facebook page and you could win this gorgeous bike. So without further ado, let's get started with the hair for this 1950s glamorous makeup look. So the hairstyle that I'm going for is a really big voluminous wavy hairstyle which is the kind of thing that you would have seen on Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor, those kind of really glamorous icons of the 1950s era. In the film Brooklyn the hairstyles were a little bit more stripped back but for this glamorous look I thought I'd give you the tutorial for big curls. So I'm going to be using the GHD Curve which is a new tong to my collection and I'm loving it so far for creating really big and glamorous curls. So before I switch that on, I'm going to separate out a really deep side parting just to create a bit of volume um, and they were big fans of the side parting back in the 1950s. So once that's done, I'm going to be taking a section of hair, spritzing it with some hairspray. They probably would have used something like Elnet back in those days, or even um, a hair lacquer, like a L'Oreal Pre, I think it was called. Um, so misting the section before using the tongs to create a really big, lovely curl. I'm going to collect the curl before it cools down and pin it onto my head just using some bobby pins. Now back in the 50s they probably wouldn't have used something like this, well they definitely wouldn't, they probably would have used heated rollers, maybe even heated in the oven. Um, or they would have used, what's it called, when they kind of tie the hair up, like string, I'm not really sure the official term, I'm sure the girls will, um, will let us know. The 50s is the curls, you know, mm -hmm. um, quite defined, quite pronounced waves mm -hmm. and curls, so in order to achieve that, they would have used like a strong set of motion. Mm -hmm. A lot of the women in, especially if they were poorer, They'd go to bed with their pin curls in, mm -hmm. and or um, rags. Okay. You know, they would wrap their hair in rags, and, mm -hmm. and they didn't wash their hair as often as we modern times now. Like everybody's washing and conditioning. Mm. Now, because as you can see, I wasn't terribly good at this particular technique. I decided to just do the normal curling technique for the back of my hair. So just using the tongs the way they're intended to be used, um, and letting the curls drop naturally. Now when I have all the curls in place, I'm going to use one more fine mist of hairspray, leave them to cool down before slowly and carefully taking them out and using a very bristly brush just to brush through the style.
Next, let's have a look at how I create this makeup look. So before I start my makeup, I'm going to pin back my beautiful curls because I do not want to get any makeup in them and I'm just using some plain hairdresser's clips which won't add any kinks into the curls. Looking a little bit like Heidi from Switzerland. And I'm just going to put on some lip balm um, and I'm using the Clarins Instant Light because I'm going to go for a really bold red lip which can dry out the lips, so just starting with some lip balm. Now, as always, I'm going to start with the base, and a really full base was incredibly popular in the 1950s. There were loads of different formulas available, ranging from liquids to creams to almost like a cake block of foundation. To get that really lovely heavy base, I'm going to be using the Immaculate Finish Foundation from Hourglass. This gives a really thick coverage. Um, I'd say a drugstore cheaper alternative would be the Rimmel Match Perfection and I'm going to dot this on to my skin which I've just put some moisturiser and some mattifying primer on there so far because a really matte complexion was the rage in the 1950s and then I'm using a buffing brush from Zoeva just to blend this in and because a really full makeup look was the style I might even go in with a second coat but for a 50s look it's not, you know, today's shiny look doesn't really work so it's really to powder very mattified. Yes, mattified. Okay. Coat number two, just to give it even more of that heavy finish that they loved in the 50s. Now, concealer was one thing that wasn't that readily available, so whereas normally I would put some under eye concealer on and maybe on any areas of redness, it just wasn't that um, available to buy in the 50s, so I'm going to miss that step out and instead just go for a bit of higher coverage with my foundation. Next I'm going to do the eyeshadow and I'm taking a Zoeva Soft Crease Liner um, bristle brush just to add a metallic brown shade all over the lid. Now in the 1950s they used to love pastel shades but also neutral browns and I feel like browns is definitely something you can get away with in 2016 a little bit more than pastels but they only really used to use one colour, they never used to um, blend the colours too much so I'm just using this one colour and swiping it all over the eyelid and bringing it out into a soft almond shape just to create a really elongated eye shape and then I'm really blending it in so that I don't have any harsh lines I'm not going to take it too dark just one simple wash of colour and then I'm taking a clean bobby brown blending brush just to really make sure there's no harsh lines We didn't have, they didn't have the selection of eyeshadows that we have nowadays. Mm -hmm. Now in the 50s they liked their brows really strong and dark but still very natural looking, especially towards the beginning of the 50s. Now the film Brooklyn was set in 1952 which obviously is at the beginning of the 50s so they would have kept their brows big but still very natural looking. They would have taken inspiration from the girls like Elizabeth Taylor, Marilyn Monroe and definitely Audrey Hepburn with her lovely big brows. So to get that really big but still natural look I'm going to use my trusty Urban Decay Brow Beater and I'm going to really follow the natural shape of my own brows but accentuating that arch area. Now when it comes to liner, a really winged out black look was all the rage going back to that retro pinup look. So I'm going to use a Bobbi Brown gel liner and my Sigma angled brush to create that really defined flick. In the eyeliner, you know, keeping it very close to the eyelashes and not too thick, depending on the character. And that's what I did for Saoirse was, mm -hmm. you know, just a very fine line. I mean, some and some people used pencil mm -hmm. and they sort of give it a flick at the side. Okay. And because a really bold upper lash line was all the rage in the 1950s, I'm also going to take a pencil. This is my Tom Ford eye defining pencil and I'm going to use this to tight line just to create a real black defined upper lash line. Pencil, you know, they use quite a lot of pencil. Mm -hmm. Same as eyebrows. I'm trying to think what else. Next I'm going to apply some mascara and while the main character in the Brooklyn film Eilish doesn't really go too wild on her mascara, she definitely favours a more natural look, 
I'm going to do another trend from the 1950s, which was that really bold, glamorous, retro pinup, very intense black mascara look. So I'm going to be using the new Estee Lauder Sumptuous Knockout to really build the volume on my upper lash line. Now they didn't used to use much mascara on the lower lash line because they really wanted to create that wide open eye look. They didn't have the wand mascaras then. Oh, they used to have these oh, little block, you know, the cake mascara with the little, um, like a very small toothbrush with a single line of um, hairs and they used, you used to wet that with um, water and then brush it onto the mm -hmm. eye or eyelashes. Brush. So this mascara is really good for creating a lovely fan effect and lifting up the lashes which means I don't have to use eyelash curlers which they probably wouldn't have had in 1952 when the film is set. The big brands back then would have been brands like Revlon, Max Factor, Bourjois, they probably would have been the brands that would have been used back then. Maybe Estee Lauder, I'm not too sure if it was around back in the 1950s. But tube mascara with the formula that we're used to seeing today was probably starting to come about in 1952 but became more popular towards the end of the 50s, whereas when the film is set, especially in Brooklyn 1952, they probably would have used block mascara still, which is kind of like a bar of soap and then almost like a toothbrush to really put the mascara onto the lashes, kind of like painting the lashes, so nothing like what we use today. So I've taken you back again so that we can go back to working on the base and as I mentioned a really matte base was all the rage in the 1950s. They would have used something like a translucent powder of which they preferred either a clear powder or something that was a little bit peachy or even green to even out those red undertones. So to recreate the look I'm using a Bare Minerals translucent powder um, which is their blemish remedy and I'm taking it on a Creative Max powder brush. So I'm just going to really loosely dab that all over the face to get rid of any glow that is remaining from my foundation. Using bronzer and contouring really wasn't a big trend in the 1950s, but in the film Brooklyn, the actress Saoirse, who plays Eilish, she has the most incredible cheekbones, so I'm going to use that as an excuse to replicate that look and just use a little bit of bronzer, this is my blusher, <laughs> use a little bit of bronzer to recreate that slightly chiselled but very natural looking cheekbone. And I'm just really lightly going to bring that into my jawline, just above the jawline, under the cheekbone, to really bring a little bit of shape into the face but without making it too obvious. We definitely don't want to look like we've got too much makeup in this area. I think this is something that you can bring up over your forehead just to give the face a nice bit of shape. So I'm using my Guerlain bronzer which doesn't have any shimmer in it, so a really nice natural one. And I'm using a Sigma face shape brush just to bring it into the jawline area. Blusher would have been used really sparingly in the 1950s just to add a bit of warmth to the face so I'm going to use a Sigma brush and my Charlotte Tilbury blusher just to do the same, just to add a little bit of warmth to the cheeks and also they could have taken it up onto the forehead, the temples, all with the aim of just bringing a little bit of warmth into the complexion. So I've used the Sigma Duo Fibre brush here and because it's Duo Fibre I find that it really doesn't pick up too much product so it's great if you want to create that really barely there sparing blush look which is perfect for the 1950s. I think that's enough, I'm going to leave it there. And then the most exciting part is the lips. For me, the best makeup moment in the film is where all the girls, including Eilish, are at an Irish dance in Brooklyn and her sisters, or kind of sisters from the boarding house, give her a makeover and then she bags the man that she's been eyeing up. So it's a really lovely scene and when she has that lipstick on you can really see that the girl's confidence just immediately is boosted. So I'm going to be using um, a few products to create a really lovely bold red lip, which was all the trend in the 1950s. Reds, pinks and corals were also popular, but red was definitely the defining colour. I'm going to start by using the Clarence Instant Light Lip Perfecting Base, just to make sure I have that really perfect base to start off my red lip. So just applying this all over 
kind of like a balm but really creates a mattifying base for the lips. And in the 1950s, big bold lips was all the rage, so they would have taken a liner like this one, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Red Carpet Liner, and just gone outside the natural shape of the lips to really make them look bigger. And there's quite a range of lipsticks, but mm -hmm. also from reds to corals. Okay. Which are always kind of fashion, really. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, they used to go slightly over the lip line and draw it in a curve. Mm -hmm. Just to and define the Yes, shape. more emphatic than Saoirse's. Her, hers was quite, you know, pulled back. Then I'm going to fill in my lips using Charlotte Tilbury's Red Carpet Red, which is a really classic red colour and would have been incredibly popular back in the 50s. And because I wanted to be really precise, I'm using a Delilah lip liner brush. And so that's the makeup done. The only last thing to do is take out the hair clips, give the hair a zhuzh up, and we're done. So this is it, the finished beauty look for that 1950s glamorous pin-up style. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that it has inspired you to give it a go yourselves. If you do, don't forget about the competition to win the gorgeous Pashley Retro bike. As I said, so jealous of whoever wins it. I definitely am going to try and enter myself, although I don't think that's allowed. Anyway, so don't forget to tag me on Instagram with hashtag Brooklyn Look, or there is also a way of entering via the Lionsgate Facebook page. But I'm going to leave all of that information down below. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up, share it if you like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!